Welcome to another edition of the Hoop Scoop. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Oh, my Joe, I'm in just a fantastic mood, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> it's my favorite time of the year as a sports fan. Football, you know, is in full swing. You got like big weight on a lot of these games in both college and the NFL level. And then in basketball, it's here. It's tipped off. You get both. So it's just like every night, like, man, I, I put a game on and be highly entertained. And I am a fan of professional and college ranks uh, in both sports. So, man, I'm, I'm living the dream right now. What about you? Obviously, Texas Tech opened the season in strong fashion, 94-61 over Bethune-Cookman here Tuesday night. Not here, but at here on campus right. at the USA. Well, what's, what was your thoughts and main takeaway from that, that performance? Yes, uh, you know, I mean, uh, for once, things went according to script. At yeah. least, uh, you know, from my standpoint, I mean, the team actually looked – like what I thought it was going to yeah. look like, you know. I mean, uh, we all suspected, I believe, that uh, that offensively this is going to be a very, very difficult team to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of skill, a lot of shooting ability. Yeah. Uh, that was totally on display, right? Yeah. So 16 three-pointers. Tied at school tied record. school yep. record. Uh, I mean, boy, Walton, Kerwin, Kerwin. absolutely went off. Yeah. With, was it seven, I believe? Seven he did make three seven. Three-pointers, yep. uh, which is the career best for him. And, I mean, but everybody was getting into the act, you know, uh, Chance. Uh, McMillan was getting into it. Uh, Darian Williams. Yeah. Had even Toppin jumped out there. He did. Out of trouble. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this this is a team that can really shoot, can really uh, score. Uh, they, they can go inside, out. You know, and, again, this is just a, a swack opponent, you know. So we, no, we sure. Don't, but, you know, yeah. that's what we've got to look at right, right. now. So uh, the indication there is that this offense is going to be really, really a challenge for anybody to handle. Rebounding, uh, we thought yes. was going to be better, and it was, certainly was, particularly on the defensive glass. Uh, you limited, uh, uh, you didn't allow uh, Bethune Cookman to get a single offensive. Is that right? In wow! The first twenty-seven minutes of the okay. game. Okay. Okay. So, and then they got five down the stretch. Right. You know, garbage think, time. Yeah, garbage time. You start uh, uh, losing focus a little bit, and so that's what happened. But I mean, you just sealed off the offensive glass or the defensive glass, and you know that's. Even though it's Bethune Cookman, that's hard to do against any oh, college yeah. team. That's an accomplishment. So, uh, rebounding looks really, really good. And of course, defensive rebounding is the final bulwark of your defense. So, that helps you defensively. Now, by the same token, there still are some issues okay. defensively yeah. uh, with this team. I mean, uh, perimeter defense could be an issue, containing ball penetration could be an issue. On the other hand, look, you were down your point guards. Yeah, you know, they were out, for, which surprised everybody with these uh, apparently minor injuries. But they wanted to be very uh, cautious with Elijah Hawkins, you know, and, and Christian Anderson. So these are your two point guards. And yeah. They didn't even play. Now those guys are used to playing perimeter defense. They're guards, exclusively guards. They're, they're not swingmen or forwards or anything. You're never going to see them playing up front. So their entire lives they have been guards and they have played defense on the perimeter. So not having them out there. Uh, hurts your perimeter defense somewhat. Yeah. So we may not have gotten a really clear picture of what they can do in terms of perimeter defense. Uh, but still, uh, you know, I don't think, and, and Coach McCaslin echoed this in the press conference, that that's ever going to be the strength of this particular team. Hmm. You know, I mean, you might be able to, just through effort, uh, get to where you're at least serviceable in that area, but it's just not going to be the team's strength, and you just got to work through that. There's several things off what you said uh, I want to kind of follow up on. Kerwin Walton, yeah, he made seven threes, and he looked good offensively. But he was diving on the floor. Yes. He was digging down uh, on guys in the post and, and getting steals. Had a couple of nice assists. I thought his all-around floor game was – I mean, he had some games like in conference where it would just randomly like once a month pop up where he'd make four threes and have a huge impact in the past couple of seasons. But – that was just a really good all-around game from Kerwin. I think that was really nice to see. Obviously, the team shooting from deep the way they did, my Joe, like that's that's really nice to see. Because that's one of those things, if you talk about in the offseason and it doesn't show up against a team like Bethune, Cookman, then everybody alarm sounds are going off like, oh, was this overrated? Are they really, you know? Now, we know Kerwin can shoot. We know Darion can shoot. He had a perfect game against Kansas. Uh we know Chance can light it up when he gets hot, too, and he's pretty consistently good from deep. But Devin Cambridge, who had missed you know, most of last season all-conference play, he came in. He even knocked down a three um, 
And I really liked, though he still looked like too amped and uh, rusty from being off offensively. I mean, he had grabbed five rebounds like that That's true. and was playing really scrappy defense. And he just adds a whole nother athletic dynamic to the team that like him and Toppin out there together is pretty scary. You know, you could throw uh, Federico out there too. And all of a sudden, like, man, this team is, you know, pretty athletic. And then you got some skill inside and you, you shoot from outside. You start like, okay, I, I, I see the path to a really good season. Rebounding is what really blew me away. And I didn't know they didn't allow offensive rebound. So you just kind of, uh, until late, until almost garbage time, uh, you kind of blew my mind. But I did see they out-rebounded Bethune-Cookman, I believe, by 23. Yes. It was like 44 to 21. I mean, I don't care who you're playing. That Division One basketball, to dominate somebody like that on the boards is really impressive. I mean, that's literally flexing on an opponent. So that gives me a lot of hope moving forward, my job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, maybe if anything was a little bit surprising about the team, it was the physicality of the team, particularly inside. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was a huge part of the rebounding success. It's just kind of just being a little bit too big and strong yeah. for the other guys. And so they, they can't get to rebounding position. I mean, our guys are bigger, they're stronger. They're just kind of walling people off and creating a barrier around that hoop. So when the ball comes off, you're in position to get it. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's just that's something you can't teach at all. You know, it's you either got that size and strength or you don't. Uh, and Tech looks like to have it. And you've got to have it in the Big 12 because it's – I mean, there's a lot of other teams. Yeah, it's not going to be that easy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. Uh, but if you're deficient in that area, if you're just yeah. dadgum small and I mean, scrawny and whatnot, then you're just going to get rolled. It's so, like the Big East back in the day, yeah, in the yeah. 80s and 90s. I mean, not, you will get term. bullied if, if if you don't have that that strength. And in, in almost in waves, at least like a couple of waves of it. Yep. can't just be your starting line, you know, your starting front line. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of speaking of that and depth and injuries, I knew about Elijah Hawkins. I I been told that but that it wasn't I, I didn't know if he was going to play or not in the over right. but just that he got dinged up and it was maybe you know maybe maybe not um but i didn't know about christian anderson yeah. so that was news to me and uh, Yalaha, you know, i didn't know about him player. either so that was news to me and uh you know it sounds like yalaho is going to be out for a little bit based on the report we got um but anderson and uh hawkins is like day to day so game to game so we'll have to see about that hopefully i just hope they're both back in time uh, for one of these four games in the four-game homestand to open the season before you go to Brooklyn, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm curious to see what the team is going to look like in its full, yeah. you know, incarnation. So, and I really do believe they're just being extra, extra cautious. Sure. I mean, they knew uh, they didn't need those guys to win this game. Right. So let's, let's not take any risk whatsoever. Get them healthy. It's such a long, hard grind in the Big 12. I think coaches are wise to take every precaution. If you can rest your guys a little bit, do yeah. it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully that will play out in some of these blowout wins, too, where there's no real reason to try to shoot for a 50-point win. Right. That means that you're putting wear and tear on your top guys. Yeah. You know, if you're up 20 pretty late in the game, man, sit them, you know. And if you only win by 15, so what? You know, maybe Ken Palm doesn't like that too much. But at least you're going to be physically stronger and healthier in theory down the stretch when you got to have those critical wins and you get wins against Big 12 opponents. That's automatically going to help your rating, right? right. So that's I where it matters. A, yeah, I think there, there's more of a benefit than a cost there for doing that. Yeah, I agree. One last thing I want to end with: I really enjoyed seeing Grant McCaslin just get after his players. So they're up <laughs> yeah. 30 points, one defensive lapse, and boom, he he was on. Yeah. You know, most good basketball coaches are like that. Yes. Don't really care about the score. It's a certain way you play the game. And if you don't, I'm going to get, you know, all, I'm going to be in your face. Yeah. I had to edit myself a couple of times. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get, you know, most coaches are like that. We definitely saw that from a very intense Graham McCaslin, who was yeah. clearly excited to tip off the season. What do you think about his style uh, and, and just all that? Yeah, that's good. I mean, uh, <laughs> players are not going to respond to a coach who's just, Lack of days, right. and easy going. I mean, if you're going to get the best out of your players, you got to challenge them. Yeah, I mean, it's that way with everything in life. It's you know, true. Like, like earning good grades and learning in school. You know, if they're giving you soft, lightweight courses and 
giving everybody A's no matter what you do, then nobody's learning anything. Right. That. You've got to be challenged. And so really good coaches recognize that. You've got to be rough on them sometimes. And, uh, you know, some people in this day and age don't like that. But, hey, man, that's that's the way it is. You want to succeed. You want to win. You want to contend for championships. Win championships. You've got to have a demanding coach. And I believe that McCaslin has that in spades. Man, you got me fired up listening <laughs> to that. You know, most of the kind of speaking to that, most – Great things in life are difficult to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And though Texas Tech looked really good in the opener, it's going to be difficult uh, in the Big 12 this year. But I can't wait to see what happens. My Joe, great stuff from you as Thank always. You. Thank you all for watching. And until next time.